To help me make this a better community for you, please take a survey that I have prepared. The link to the survey will be above in the video cards and also below in the description box. Thank you in advance. Should you find yourself having a bad guy at gunpoint during WROL and you've decided not to shoot him because he has surrendered, do you know what you'll do next with him? This video will give you an option so that you don't accidentally force yourself into becoming an unwanted executioner during SHTF, right after the channel intro. Remember, you are ultimately responsible for protecting yourself and for providing for yourself. Live your life with honor and integrity, and always be the wolf hunter. Don't be the sheep, and never be the wolf. Welcome to this community. I'm an avid prepper, an oath keeper, and I'm certified to teach firearms and the use of deadly force through my state's police academy. If you want to learn true prepping skills instead of just seeing another gear review channel, and if you want to learn how to protect yourself and also how to keep yourself out of jail should you have to protect yourself, then please subscribe to this channel. Welcome to the Ethical Preparedness channel. I want to introduce to you a longtime uh, prepping partner of mine. Name of his channel is Responsible Patriot. Uh, he's a good guy. Uh, check his channel out if you get a chance. I'll put a link to it above in the cards and down in the description box too. We're going to do several videos together today. So you're going to see us wearing the same clothing over the next several videos. And again, we're out here at, uh, at his uh, property. And uh, so folks, I hope you enjoy these video series. I've seen a lot of training videos out there that deal with using firearms to stop a bad guy. And most of them are about actually shooting the bad guy, or some of them even talk about holding the bad guy at gunpoint until police arrive. But what if SHTF has happened, and most of our rule of law is gone, and you have no police to come and take the bad guy? I'm hoping that this video, and the video series planned for this topic, will give you more options and tools so that you can be better prepared for situations like this. Okay, so we're going to be doing a multi-video series on effectively taking bad guys into custody. So let's set up the scenario for these next several videos, which is the scenario is SHTF has happened. You found somebody on your bug out property, on your bug out location, what, your bug out retreat, your prepper retreat location, whatever you're at. But SHTF has happened and you found somebody on your property and um, you've got him at gunpoint. So the purpose of this video, these next videos is, what are you gonna do with this person once you have them at gunpoint? So now a lot of people automatically envision that <laughs> SHTF is just automatically going to be mad, mad, mad max beyond Thunderdome. They never take in consideration that SHTF might be an economical collapse like where America gets knocked back to living like the second Great Depression mm -hmm. or we end up living like what's the country Venezuela, Venezuela or yeah. something like that where you have a lot of the loss of rural law so there's gonna be a lot of people that watch these videos and say oh well if I got a guy at gunpoint on my property if it's SHTF I'm automatically gonna put a bullet between the guy's eyes and I just I just want to warn against having that kind of a mindset Again, we don't know, we can only guess what SHTF will be like, how bad, where at on the spectrum it would mm -hmm. land at, you know. And so I always like to plan and prepare for, to have contingency, contingency plans, <clears throat> where if it is Mad Max, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome type SHTF, well then yeah, we will put a bullet in somebody's myself and catch them on our property. Mm -hmm. uh, but if there is some rule of law, we have, there is that, county lawman or the or whoever comes in once in a blue moon uh, where uh, we can adapt and overcome right there's a <clears throat> long list of different SHTF situations that uh, can with varying degrees of severity that won't require that sort of extreme uh, action so I mean and economic you know, downturn uh, unemployment is one I talk about a lot on my yeah. channel uh, that a lot of people usually ad are attacked let's say attacked by that at some point in their life mm -hmm. um so just you know it could be a lot of different things so um well and let's say you know you're you're with your prepper retreat group and you're at your prepper retreat location your bug out location but you're uh you know shtf has happened and your prepper retreat groups together you, you've activated it and, um you're doing your patrols of your property and um and you found 
a neighbor's adult kid, mm. you know, on your property stealing eggs or something. You, you know this guy. You may not know him like a brother or something, but you know your neighbor very well. Are you automatically going to shoot his 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 right. his kid? You know what I mean? Might be this might be a good time when you take somebody into custody and take them back to where they belong to. You know, mm -hmm. if you can end the situation <clears throat> without causing bloodshed, which could cause a uh, suddenly neighbors wanting to, to attack other neighbors or what So this is just scenarios that we just want you to think about. So when we do this video series, this is how you can take people into custody once you've got them at gunpoint and you've decided that you don't necessarily want to end this person's life. To kind of sum this up, if you haven't given yourself extra options in your self-defense training, you might inadvertently force yourself to become an executioner because once you've gotten a bad guy at gunpoint and he has surrendered and once you realize that you don't know what to do with him next then you may feel forced to shoot him because you don't know of any other options all right so these next several videos are going to show you how to handcuff somebody whether you're with somebody else or whether you're by yourself and you can do in this video I'm going to be using handcuffs because well being a police officer I have handcuffs but you can use handcuffs zip ties rope whatever you have that you can bind these people's hands with so again these videos are just going to demonstrate these next several videos are going to demonstrate several different ways that you can do this and just remember the more that you train with this stuff the more fluid your actions will be should you find yourself in the situation so what I highly suggest after you watch this video Get your partner, get your loved one, get get a pair of handcuffs <laughs> if you don't already have one of those pink fuzzy ones at home. Get you a pair of handcuffs and practice this and have you and where you guys practice on each other. The first one that we're going to demonstrate, I like to call it the, uh, the the figure four. A lot of times, if I'm in a deadly situation, I like to order the bad guy to the ground. Sometimes you already get the bad guys on the ground; they're already on the ground for whatever reason. But by getting somebody on the ground, sometimes that can help to put them at a disadvantage. And now we're gonna demonstrate it. Now, while I prefer to have backup when I take somebody into custody, sometimes you just don't have backup available. And while having backup is preferred, it is my belief that these techniques can be used with or without backup. Put your hands on top of your head. Put them on top of your head. Get down on the ground. Get down on your knees. Get down on your knees. Lay down on your stomach. Lay down on your stomach. Hands out to your sides. Hands out to your sides. Palms facing the sky. Palms facing the sky. Look to your left. Look to your left. What I want you to do right now, listen very closely, okay? I will shoot you if you make any sudden movements. Do you understand? Yes. I want you to take your left foot, place it on the back side of your right knee. Make a figure four. Do not move. Do you understand? Yes. If you move, I will shoot you. Do you understand? Yes. Keep looking to your left. Alright. <laughs> Give me your left hand. Give me your left hand. Right here. All right. <laughs> Give me your left hand. Give me your Okay, so again, I've caught this uh, this bad guy on the bug out in the uh, bug out location, the retreat location. And again, I'm going to take him at gunpoint. I'm not feeling like I need to take his life at this point, but I feel like he's obviously a definite danger to me and the rest of the retreat group. Now, the rest of the retreat group, I might have been out looking for something. I'm, who knows? That I'm out. I found this guy. I'm by myself. Again, like I said in the, one of the last videos, I'm going to use loud voice commands so that he knows what I want. Place your hands on top of your head. All right. 
I want to see his hands. Hands are what 99% of the time the bad guys use to kill you with. Whether they strangle you with those hands, whether they hold a knife with those hands, or they hold a gun or a blunt force object weapon with those hands. Bad guys 99% of the time kill you by using their hands. So I want to see his hands. Next, I'm gonna order him to his knees. I don't wanna take him into custody standing up if I don't have to. If I can handcuff him laying down, him laying down, that's what I personally like to do. So next, I'm gonna order him down to, your, down to his knees. Get down to your knees, get down to your knees. <clears throat> now, I like to be offset a little bit off the bad guy. I don't like being directly behind him. I like being offset a little bit, all right? Now I'm going to order him down to his stomach. Get down on your stomach. Get down on your stomach. Stop right there. So I know that he's going to have to use his hands to lower himself to the ground unless he wants to break his nose once he hits the ground. So I know he's going to use his hands. So as soon as his stomach hits the ground, I'm going to start ordering his hands out to his side. Hands out, hands out, hands out to your sides. Now, again, I want to see the palms of his hands. Palms facing upwards, palms facing upwards. Look to your left. Now, because <clears throat> I am offset to his right side, I'm going to make him look to his left side. That way, he has less of an ability and less of a chance to see me. If bad guys want to hurt you, they want to see you, they want to see where you're at, what you're doing, <clears throat> but they actually want to see you so they can, can develop a plan of action. So that's why I'm going to tell him to look to his left. If I was on his left side, I would be commanding him to look to his right side. Now, <clears throat> this figure four, if you're a wrestler or anything like this, you're going to be very familiar with this, with this technique. But I'm going to tell him to place his left foot on the back side of his right knee. Place your left foot on the back side of your right knee. Make a figure four. Now I tell him make a figure four because if he is confused by what I'm telling him when I give him something he can visualize, then he's going to be more apt to understand what I'm asking him to do and, tell, and, and he'll do it, all right? Now I'm going to give him some other voice commands to make sure that he understands that I'm not joking around, but I feel like I'm in danger, and if he does something stupid, it's going to cost him his life. Do not move. Do you understand? Yes. If you move, I will shoot you. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes. All right. What I'm going to do is when I holster my weapon, I'm going to do it silently. I don't want him to hear that I'm holstering my weapon. So you have to excuse us. we got a lot of the deer flies that's coming and landing on us. Obviously, he's going to do some movement while I'm doing this to get to... Uh, <laughs> to, uh, to try to get the deer nose. flies to leave him alone. <laughs> so as I approach, I'm going to quietly holster my weapon. And when I come up, I'm going to scoop this right leg. Now, when I come to a stop, my left, ne left knee is on his left butt cheek. My right, is this hurting? I just had to adjust it. Do what? You good. My right knee is down here by his right side. I am not holding on to his foot with my hands. My body is controlling his right, his, his foot here. <clears throat> this doesn't look like it hurts, but this hurts. Now, I've had some pretty big guys <laughs> where they can actually almost kick me off. When they've done that, I've just grabbed onto their shirts and I just, I'm not gonna do it to, to uh, the responsible patriot here because I like him, but I just had just really cranked forward really hard by holding onto their shirts. Anyways, again, I am not controlling his foot with my hands. I'm controlling his foot with my body. So it keeps my hands open if I needed to do whatever I gotta do. Now again, this doesn't look like this hurts. If you've done wrestling or anything like this, you know this can be pretty painful. So I, again, I don't want you to give me your left hand until you feel the pressure, okay? 
Go ahead and place your left hand back out. Don't give me your right hand until you feel the pressure, okay? All right, so that's all I'm having to do. Go ahead and place your hands back. All right, so now, these are real bad guys. I'm, I'm gonna be cranking on this quite, uh, quite a bit more. Give me your left hand, give me your left hand, give me your left hand. All right, place the first cuff on. I'm watching around me. I'm, I'm watching him, watching around me at the same time. Give me your right hand, give me your right hand. And then I place the right hand cuff on. And then once you've thoroughly searched him, then you can do whatever is needed to be done with him. Whether it's delivering him back to his family, or delivering him to whatever law enforcement may be left during SHTF, or whatever you and your prepper group has decided. Okay, another variation of this one, instead of you having them make the figure four, you use your own leg by making the figure four. So we've already got him sprawled out, got him looking to the left, got his arms out, got his uh, palms face in the uh, sky, spread your legs a little bit. Again, do not move. If you move, I will shoot you. Do you understand? Yes. Again, we do not want him to know that we're holstering our weapon. This one's very easy. You come up, scoop the leg. You're simply placing your leg in between and now you're, and this is pretty tight for you, right? Yep. Are you feeling pressure already? Yep. All right. And at this point, give me your left hand, give me your left hand. All right. On handcuff. And then I would take his other hand on handcuff him that way. Some of you just may believe that you'll just automatically believe that during SHTF that you'll just shoot anybody that you catch doing any type of wrong to you. But I just invite you to think about how every situation has many, many variables involved and how the more tools that you have on your tool belt, aka the more options that you give yourself, then the more that you're apt to succeed when you do find yourself having to make a critical decision. And one thing that I've learned from fellow police officers who have been forced to shoot somebody is that taking somebody's life has a tendency to mess with your head more than what you may think it will. So if you can give yourself an option to not have to shoot somebody when you don't have to shoot them, this may save your mental health down the road should SHTF happen. This is especially true if you can help ensure that your shootings will only be defensive shootings and not force yourself into being an executioner because you didn't know what to do with that bad guy once he had surrendered. Also, I could have spent a lot longer on this technique detailing every little specific about it, but I wanted to keep this video within a reasonable time limit and also not to make it too complicated. Anyways, folks, I'm not saying that this is the be-all, end-all tactic to use to take somebody into custody. I'm just wanting to present to you a fairly easy tactic that you can train on now if you decide to, and then to use when SHTF happens. Support this channel, please consider joining my Patreon video channel for only $1 a month to get access to videos before the release to YouTube and other upcoming exclusive rewards available only to Patreon members. Doing this will help me make this a better community for you all. And also hit the like button and comment below with your thoughts. And hit the little bell notification button and please also share this video. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this channel as I plan on making many more videos about prepping and self-defense. Anyways folks, if you made it this far, Hey, thank you very much for watching, and I pray that you have a good night.